Go to come. Stay. As a world-class nature photographer, David Schultz spends most days hiking in the wilderness in search of that perfect shot. The demands of his work require an active, sometimes grueling pace. And so it comes as a bit of a surprise to learn that David has been living with diabetes for most of his life. 117, so good shape. David was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at age 13, and he soon learned that a normal life was possible with careful management of the disease. But his doctors warned him that diabetes was a leading cause of blindness, and he was discouraged from choosing a career that would depend on his sight. That was one of the main complications that really stuck with me and, you know, really, if anything, did terrify me. The thought of losing my eyesight was not a, not a pleasant thought. Fear he might one day go blind wound up inspiring a kind of wanderlust. The thought of losing my vision was really uh, in, in the back of my mind, I guess, all of the time. And I decided that I wanted to get out. I made a goal when I got out of high school that I wanted to travel to all of the states. After graduation, David headed out on what was to be a two-week trip from Michigan to Florida. Somehow during that trip, I ended up out in Arizona and New Mexico as well. And you know, I was gone for about two months. More road trips followed, and somewhere along the way, he picked up a camera. A chance meeting with a professional photographer eventually brought it all into focus. We were photographing a beautiful sunset, and I started talking to him and found out that's what he did for a living. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. He travels around, takes pictures of pretty places, and makes a living at it. Despite the doctor's warnings about his risks of going blind, David decided that this was the kind of life he wanted, too. He moved to Dallas and fell into the world of lifestyle and fashion photography. Probably being, uh, you know, 20 years old and photographing beautiful women uh, seemed pretty appealing at the times. But he soon rediscovered his passion for capturing nature's beauty. I was hired to come out to Utah to photograph some uh, images for one of the local resorts. And after we finished that assignment, we did a little road trip down to southern Utah and was just blown away. These days, David has made a name for himself as an accomplished landscape and wildlife photographer. He runs his own gallery in Park City, Utah, where he sells limited edition prints of his work. One of the keys to his success in capturing such stunning beauty, the patience to wait for just the right moment. When an image comes together, I mean, sometimes it's going back to a place over and over again. But all that patience requires a good deal of time spent alone, out in the elements, potentially hazardous for someone living with type 1 diabetes. I do take the precautions that I can, things like having a personal locator beacon and, you know, first aid kits, things like that. He tests his blood sugar frequently, especially at higher elevations. You never know when something will come up and tend to keep my blood sugars pretty tight and get out in the outdoors and it's just don't like to have it too low. But concerns about his eyesight were not unwarranted. Eleven years ago, he developed retinopathy, a progressive eye disease causing the blood vessels in the back of his retina to hemorrhage. Once it happened, right before a trip to Antarctica, he was blind in his left eye for the entire three-week trip. Having that in the back of my mind, the chance of losing my vision, uh, quite often, you know, makes me that much more appreciative of what I've gone and have done with my life and what I've seen. But with the technologies that's there, the laser treatments and other things that can uh, be done to treat retinopathy, uh, I feel a little less threatened. And David appreciates the irony of his own situation, a life path chosen in part because of diabetes. If I hadn't become a diabetic, I never would have become a photographer, and I never would have experienced some of these 
locations and moments that I have and I feel extremely fortunate to be able to get to these places and also to spend the time that is necessary to capture the images that I do.